It has been called one of the angriest films in recent film history, and it's both loved and hated by the critics. Yet three billboards in Ebbing, Missouri is the winner of many Golden Globes and perhaps could be the best picture of the year. The acting is amazing. It's provocative. It's disturbing. It's filled with violence, tough language, and racism. It's brutal, weird, hilarious, profound, and dark. And it causes us to stop and take notice, and it fills us with questions. Interestingly enough, some critics have called it the most religious film of all time with deeply Christian and Jewish undertones. Simply put, if one can get underneath the anger, brutality, and racism of the film, it's really all about sin, forgiveness, and redemption. Frances McDormand plays Mildred Hayes, a bereaved mother of a raped and murdered daughter. She is enraged, but the rage is a cathartic expression. Underneath the rage is grief and shame and indescribable pain. One critic describes her well. She has righteous anger, but it's wild anger lashing out like a rabid dog, biting everything and everyone. There are two other main characters. Chief Willoughby, a respected man dying of cancer, and Dixon, his racist deputy, who has a penchant for police brutality. Now, not to give away too much of the story, let me zero in on one of the most poignant scenes. The dying Wilbur, Willoughby writes letters to a number of his friends. And the most poignant letter is to Dixon, his racist deputy. And in this letter, Willoughby cajoles Dixon, who has no qualms about abusing his power. And he seems to have no redemptive value whatsoever. But Willoughby sees potential in him. He sees goodness in him, and he challenges him to re-evaluate his life if he truly wants to become a detective. And he writes in his letter that he has to, to understand one very profound truth, that he will never live up to his personal and professional goals until he learns how to love. Well, the Lenten season calls each one of us to reevaluate our lives. That challenge to Dixon is the same challenge that Jesus gives to each one of us. That we will never become all that we can become until we learn how to love and how to forgive. And Jesus exemplifies both in that story of the transfiguration. He takes Peter with him to the mountain, and he gives him an experience that Peter simply does not deserve. Peter was a weak man who gave in to his own dark side and betrayed Jesus. And even on the mountain, Peter was afraid of his own shadow, and he wanted to stay there. But Jesus sends him back. He sends him back to share the love and forgiveness that he experienced on that mountain. You see, Jesus loved Peter unconditionally. And that really is the underlying theme of three billboards in Ebbing, Missouri. It's the gift of unconditional grace that's available to each one of us, even during the most tragic moments of our lives, to even help us get beyond the justifiable anger that we might have. And as we look at the scriptures, if anything is scandalous about the life and the ministry of Jesus, 
It's his unconditional love and forgiveness. This is the challenge of the film. As we watch it, it involves us deeply in the human condition. We can certainly understand the wild rage of a mother who loses her daughter in such a tragic way. And we're sickened at the behavior of the deputy. We're powerless to stop him. And yet in the midst of both of their lives, we see glimpses of their softening. We see glimpses of change, of renewal, of reevaluation, of movement. We begin to see the workings of grace in the midst of the evil. The movie presents to us the shadow side of humanity. And as we watch it, we become so much very aware that each one of us is capable of that same kind of, of anger and rage and racism. That each one of us is capable of spending our lives in wild rage, lashing out like a rabid dog, biting everything and everyone. And that it is only by the grace of God that we can heal our anger, move beyond our racism, and involve ourselves in that struggle. And it's a struggle at times to love and to forgive. The movie's violent, yet as disturbing as it is, it's funny at times and challenging, but it doesn't give us the answer. It leaves us at the end. We have to make the determination as to whether Mildred and Dixon will choose good over evil, whether they will resist their shadow side. And certainly, that's the challenge of all of humanity, and that's the challenge that each one of us faces throughout our lives. Will we resist our shadow sides or will we allow the hurts and the disappointments and the tragedy of, tragedies of our lives to keep us wildly raging? Or will we struggle to allow the grace of God to heal our anger and to root out our racism? This is the challenge for each of us during the Lenten season, to reevaluate our lives so that we realize that we will never become all we can become until we learn how to really love and how to forgive. The film says to us that anger, violence, and hate only begets more anger, violence, and hate.